fire in Trump Tower. One man died and six firefighters were injured battling the blaze. President Trump on Twitter saying the high rise was well built and praising the firefighters for doing a great job. His son Eric sent a nearly identical tweet. Now the Trumps are, however, taking heat for not mentioning 67-year-old Todd Brasner, the man who died in the 50th floor inferno, and for not having sprinklers installed in the building. We have the details on all of that, but also we're going to take a look at the gubernatorial race. Mark Molinaro just tossed his hat in the ring, and he's coming out swinging, hitting Governor Cuomo on Albany corruption. Cynthia Nixon has her gloves up, too, and she is hitting the governor from the left. Ben Max, executive editor of the Gotham Gazette, joins us to discuss the details. Ben, it's always good to have you here with us. My pleasure, Jay. So let's start with this, this, this unfortunate, tragic situation at Trump Tower. Man dies. Uh, President Trump, being who he is, necessarily is going to draw attention to him and to the building. And you might say it's, it, it's unfair. He didn't start a fire. But nonetheless, that's the way things play out. People want to see a reaction from the president about something so close to home for him. And I think, as you said, this is a little bit uh, exactly what you'd expect from Trump as we know him in terms of he talks about his building being well built and he struggles to show empathy. You know, you also have to realize that he might want to not put any attention on any liability that he might have. I mean, there's always the danger of that. And we know in some of the reporting that's come out, there are issues about the lack of a sprinkler system, uh, and it wasn't mandated by law that he had to have it, but that he had previously fought about, uh, in, against having to yeah. retrofit. And people should understand that, that, that the law was such that when that building was put up, it did not have to be sprinklered. Uh, and, and New York now has been wrestling for a while with this notion of do you sort of re retrofit buildings here. And there's, there's even some suggestion after this that that you might see some movement in the legislature. There could be. I mean, this easily could spur another discussion about those requirements, or maybe there's some sort of incentives to retrofit because they do that with environmentally friendly measures. So you could see that around these safety measures. You know, but I think, again, interesting about the president, he might not want to bring about any discussion about the fact that he did not choose to retrofit with sprinklers. But you also see this troubling pattern with him of this lack of empathy and not even acknowledging that there was a loss of life in his building where he resides um, when he's not at the White House, of course. Uh, it's a little bit difficult for people to, to wrestle with, especially when he's also not just praising the uh, firefighters, but also talking about how well built his, his building is. Yeah, we'll have to see how that then plays out afterwards. Let's turn the corner here and talk a little bit about the, the, the gubernatorial race. Uh, we're seeing now, and I mentioned uh, in, in another Republican saying, all right, I want in mm -hmm. on this battle here. And right off the bat, we're seeing a, a challenge to the notion of the integrity of, of Albany under Governor Cuomo. Is that something that you expect is going to be a common theme uh, in this election? It already is, absolutely. I mean, we knew going into Governor Cuomo trying to seek a third term that his record over eight years of cleaning up the corruption in Albany or not, as it is, uh, is going to be front and center, partly because he promised when he originally ran for governor to do just that. Now, they've implemented some minor ethics changes several times, and things are definitely in a little bit of a better place than they, they were. However, you've seen major indictments, and even recently you've seen conviction of the governor's former top aide. And in this election so far already, we're seeing people on the left and the right use that against Cuomo with a lot of justification, a lot of facts to back them up. So he's getting it not just from Cynthia Nixon on the left, but now from multiple Republican candidates on the right, including Mark Molinaro, who's now in the race. I have seen even allies of the governor saying he needs to get out there in front. He needs to be talking more, especially when you're, when you're being sort of singed by the heat of people around you being charged or, as you mentioned, convicted. Are you surprised? Because if you, if you know the governor and you look at the governor, he's not afraid to mix it up. Are you surprised that he's not out there more and more dramatically saying, look, I know this is a problem and I, 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 I understand we got to do something better to fix this? I think he wants to talk about all sorts of other things. And so I, having watched the governor closely now for quite a number of years, I'm not surprised that he wouldn't take that head on, especially when his former top aide and someone he said was like a brother, like a third son to his father, was just convicted on multiple corruption charges. And we shouldn't forget, there's another corruption trial starting in June 
for another top aid, former top aide of the governor involving the governor's economic development programs. So this is not something the governor wants to talk about. He'd much rather talk about what he's doing to fix the MTA, what he's doing to address NYCHA, his accomplishments over two terms. These are the things he wants to talk about. And we've seen him actually increase the frequency of his activity to talk about those things or to point the finger at Mayor de Blasio and NYCHA to step in there, uh, to force the city in the most recent state budget to pay more for the MTA. He's taking those actions. He doesn't want to talk about government corruption. Um, you know, one of the things that he's trying to sell is that if he has a full democratic state legislature, that he might be able to push some of those things through, but they're low down the list for him. It's interesting to me, I don't live in the city here, but obviously follow it very carefully, but it's interesting that you, you see in some ways, and tell me if, if I'm right about this, in some, some ways you're seeing the governor running against the mayor. Does, you does are seeing, sense? you are absolutely seeing that in some ways. Everybody knows that they're foes. Everybody knows that they're rivals, despite the fact that they both have a D next to their name. That's about as much as they have in common, although, in some ways, you could say they have some similar belief system and some similar approach to politics in, in some ways. Uh, but we know that Cynthia Nixon has been a de Blasio ally. We know that there's lots of talk about this being somewhat of a proxy battle for Mayor de Blasio. Now, we've seen a little bit from Nixon early on that she's willing to sort of separate herself from de Blasio, even some of the comments she's made about NYCHA conditions. You can't say anything other than that. They're in terrible shape. But she did. And we'll see how she navigates that going forward. We'll see if the mayor endorses her. But it's very easy for Governor Cuomo to come in and say, look at all these problems in New York City. This is where my political base is. I need to shore that up. So I'm going to point the finger at the mayor for the problems. Last question for you. You mentioned Cynthia Nixon. Do you get any sense that she's generating any traction here? So the early polls are definitely a little bit tough for her. But you wouldn't expect her to come in immediately be anywhere near the governor's poll numbers. So the thing for her is that she's going to be able to command lots of media attention. Now, if she stumbles, she stumbles, and that's going to be all over the press. But she's been very strategic so far about her appearances and her interviews. And so I would expect for her to climb as more and more people are paying attention to this race. Uh, the governor is clearly the favorite, and he's got a ton of money in the bank. Uh, but it could get interesting here uh, this spring and into the summer. I think definitely interesting. Ben, it's always a pleasure. I always feel like I've learned something when I sit down and get a chance to chat oh, with you. Thank you. I hope the viewers have too. We'll look forward to talking with you again real soon. Appreciate it. You'll be welcome.